Hello and welcome to the Coding Bytes. I am Abhishek Parmar and in this video we are going to solve some more questions related to the pseudocode which are going to be asked in online test of Capgemini. In the previous video we have also solved some questions related to pseudocode so you can also watch that video link is in the i button and before starting this video if you have not subscribed to the channel please subscribe and press the bell icon so that you never miss any update. With this let's get started. So this is our first question. So in this question you have to tell how many times the following loop will be executed. So first of all there is a variable ch which is initialized with value b and then there is a while loop and uh, in this while loop the condition is ch greater than equals to a and ch less than equals to z and inside this while loop there is a single line statement ch plus plus that means every time this loop will be executed ch will be incremented by 1. So first of all let us assume we have a variable ch and the value of ch is b. Now in the first iteration this condition will be tested and as you can see b lies between a to z that means it is greater than equals to a and it is less than equals to z. So this while loop will be executed and this will increase ch by 1. So after incrementing ch it will become c. Now once again we will check the condition inside this while loop. So the condition is again true because C lies between A and Z. So again CH will be incremented by 1 and now CH will become D. So as you can see this while loop has been executed 2 times till now. Now similarly again the condition will be tested and till our CH becomes greater than Z this loop will be executed. So we can directly say from value B to Z this loop will be executed because the initial value of CH is B. So there are total 25 number of characters from B to Z. So without wasting our time we can directly say that this loop will be executed 25 times. So our answer will be 25. Now moving to the next question. So in this question we have to tell the output of this pseudocode. So as you can see in this pseudocode there are two inputs m equals to 9 and n equals to 6. So I represented m and n here. Then after this the next statement is m equals to m plus 1. So because of this m will now increment it by 1 and it will become 10. Then after this the next statement is n equals to n minus 1. So because of this n will be decremented by 1 and now n will become 5. Now after this in the next line there is a statement m equals to m plus n which means we have to add the value of m and n. So the value of m is 10 plus the value of n is 5. So 10 plus 5 will become 15 and this value 15 will be assigned to the m. So now m will become 15. Now after this there is a if condition if m greater than n. So as you can see m is 15 and n is 5. So 15 is greater than 5. So this condition will be true. So because this condition is true the next statement will be executed which is print m. So because of printm we will display the value 15 on the screen. So that means the output of this pseudocode is 15. Now moving to the third question. In this pseudocode we have input f is equals to 6 and g is equals to 9. So I have represented f is equals to 6 and g is equals to 9. Then we have a variable sum and the initial value of sum is 0. So I have represented sum with initial value 0. After this we also have a variable n which is an integer so I have represented integer and as we don't know the value of n so I have represented it with question mark. Now moving forward we have a condition if g greater than f. So if the condition is true then this for loop will be executed. As you can see there is a statement end loop which means this is the body of the for loop or if this condition is false then this else block will be executed and it will simply display the error message. Now let's see what is the condition. So the condition is if g greater than f. So as you can see f is 6 and g is 9. So 9 is greater than 6 that means this condition is true. So this for loop will be executed. Now in this for loop the initialization part is n is equals to f. Now the variable n will become 6 and after this the condition in this for loop is n less than g which means if n is less than g so 6 less than 9 the condition is true. So we will move inside this for loop and the statement sum equals to sum plus n will be executed. So because of this n will be added to sum so 0 plus 6 will now become 6 that means our sum will become 6. 
then after this because of n equals to n plus 1 n will be incremented by 1 and now n will become 7 then once again we will check the condition n less than g so again you can see 7 is less than 9 so this loop will be executed now because of this sum equals to sum plus n will be executed now 7 plus 6 will become 13 so sum will now become 13 and because of this n equals to n plus 1 n will now incremented by 1 so n will now become 8 then after this again we will test the condition n less than g so as you can see 8 less than 9 so still the condition is true again sum equals to sum plus n will be executed and because of this this time 13 plus 8 will add up and will become 21 so 21 will be assigned to the variable sum so as you can see at the end we have to print the value of sum so the sum is 21 that means our answer is 21 now our next question is from data structures so you can also expect some questions from data structures so the question is like uh, we have given a function a public void function tree root which means this question is about tree inside this question first of all there is a statement which says root dot left then after this we are accessing root dot right that means right node after that we are accessing root dot data which means the data of the root node so if you are from cs background or you are familiar with data structures so you can clearly understand what tree is and if you don't know what is tree so tree is basically made with the help of a linked list it has a root a left and a right part so if we are accessing the root node first it is called pre-order traversal if we are accessing root at the end it is called post-order traversal and if we are accessing the root node in the middle of left and right it is called in order traversal so in this case as you can see the order is left right and root as you can see i have numbered left with one right with two and root with three which means we are accessing root at the end so this traversal will be called as post order traversal now moving to the last question now moving to the last question of this video so the question is consider the following piece of code what will be the space required for this code it means the question is related to the space complexity so if you have idea about the time and space complexity so solving this question will be very easy for you but if you don't know about the space complexity don't worry i will explain here so first of all in this piece of code we have a integer array as you can see a and after that we have a variable n so starting from here we can say we will require two bytes for this variable n after this there is also a variable called sum so for this sum variable again two bytes are required so i have written two bytes for sum now with this we also have a variable i and because i is of integer data type so for i also we will require two bytes now once we are done with all the integer variables we will move to the integer array so you can simply say for the integer array the space required will be equals to 2 into n because the size of integer is two bytes given here suppose we have n elements in an array so we can simply say 2 into n this will be a space required for this array now considering 2n if we add 2 bytes for 3 elements and this 2n so we can say 2n plus 6 but now as you can see there is no option 2n plus 6 so there is one important point which i am going to tell you here which might be a new thing for you so please listen this thing very carefully so in this code there is a statement return sum so this return sum statement will also take two bytes of memory so this might be a new thing for you but you have to remember this thing that return statement also take a space of two bytes so with this as we can see two bytes for each variable and a return statement will add up and it will make eight and our array will take 2n so our answer will be 2n plus 8 which is a option so with this we have solved five questions in this video and i think all the explanations are clear but still if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section below and please don't forget to subscribe the coding bytes for the future updates thank you